this morning I uh, got up to the sound that you can hear behind me that are titi monkeys and they're really quite close to camp so what I'm doing is just slowly making my way um, towards where I can hear them to see if I can get closer and get some pictures. This area near camp has some kind of like nice dense jungle so it feels really cool and they're certainly getting a lot louder. There's two troops, one in front of me and one off to the side calling to each other so hopefully I can get my eyes on some and get a few shots this morning. But, oh, what a great sound to wake up to. So while on my quest for the TT monkeys uh, I've come across a new vista point um, this is just at the end of one of the trails that comes from camp and it gives such a great view over the whole river basin but in addition it's also right over the flight path for the macaws and parrots that are heading down to the clay lick and I've had loads of them, you can hear them actually just coming past as they come back uh, from feeding on the clay so I think this is going to be a really good spot um, to sit out with my long lens and pick out some different shots You've got such a great background of the Andes uh, rolling off after you've uh, passed the rainforest um, that could create a really cool shot, um, a kind of environmental portrait, that animal in the landscape image of the macaws coming over the rainforest. I think you just need a little bit more light. Um, this morning there's a bit too much cloud off over where the sun's rising. But other than that, I think you could make a really, really nice image. So I'm definitely going to be sat here um, with my tripod, long lens, as well as my 70 to 200 over my shoulder um, for quite a few mornings to try and pick out some different shots. But right, let's see if we can find those monkeys. So I didn't record it because it was just well too quick, but I stepped in from the viewpoint and a little group of titi monkeys just came through uh, the trees here. They're walking along the bamboo, climbing over the top of me, uh, and I managed to get some quite nice images. There was one that was sat um, just like between, um, between on a piece of wood, uh, so I could frame up with him with his tail hanging down uh, and the kind of jungle landscape behind. Really nice shot. Uh, I'm going to keep following and see if I can find more, but if not, I think I've got about 30 images um, that I quite like. Um, and probably, there's probably only two or three that I'll really use, but really nice to see them. And they were quite close as well, there were about four or five of them. But I can still hear rustling and them off in the distance as they've moved through. Um, so I'm going to keep tracking and, and see if I can find them again. <laughs> So it's been 20 minutes or so uh, that I've been following along and looking for them. I've had a couple of sightings but they're actually now moving off onto the reserve itself. Um, so I'm probably not going to catch up with them. But I thought I'd just run through my settings of what I was using. So I was using my 70-200 with a 1.4 teleconverter giving me an equivalent of 280mm f4. Um, and basically what I was doing is handheld down to f4, ISO 1600 to give me a reasonable speed, shooting about 500 a second with the VR on and just picking through the foliage um, using single point autofocus to just pinpoint those heads. Um, the thing is with the TT Monkey they're quite dark so in order to get some detail on the face I was either waiting for them to just appear into a little patch of light or just slightly overexposing to give me a little bit more detail on the raw file that will hopefully help me in processing. But you know, with 30 pictures in the bag to get started with, really good start, and I got some really cracking views through my binoculars as well. You know, a lot of the time with wildlife photography, you have these great moments, these really nice, intimate kind of times with wildlife to see them and get some pictures. But when they start moving away, um, chasing them down to get more pictures, 
isn't always the most effective way. Sometimes just watching them, seeing their habits and seeing what they do um, is far more useful um, to get you for a feel of when they might be back. And I know that I've heard them on a couple of other mornings be in this area, so I know that actually if I hear them, I can get onto location, get into these little spots and wait for them. That's going to be far more effective at getting pictures rather than trying to track them through the forest uh, where it's pretty much impossible when you're not on a trail. Um, but what I'm going to do now is head over to the other side of camp and see if I can pick up uh, my, um, my remote camera, my camera trap and see if we've got anything on it because it's been set for the last couple of days and uh, you never know, we might have something. And that'd be a pretty good morning before breakfast, I think. Just heading en route to my camera trap and the light is starting to come through into the forest now. Um, and it's brightening some real nice highlights in some of the larger leaves and stuff. So I'm just shooting a few detailed pictures of the canopy. These are really great ones to add into a portfolio um, because you know, all the wildlife and stuff, often when you want to string it together, it's good to have the detail shots, the kind of intimate sections of the landscape to bring a whole portfolio together. If you only ever concentrate on the wildlife, I think sometimes you miss the essence of the landscape you're in. So always try and shoot uh, lots of detail, close pictures, uh, as well as some more expansive views of detail as well. But we'll talk about that in a future video. But right now I'm going to shoot these because the light is absolutely gorgeous before I head in and check out my camera trap. Right, so I've just got up to my camera trap and everything looks like it's in the right position. Uh, nothing's been destroyed by ants, so that's pretty good. Uh, but right, let's check the scout and see what we've got. No pictures. Well, you know, that's the whole thing with camera trapping. It is a lot of uh, patience and you don't always get a shot. It'd be really boring if you got a shot absolutely every time. So I'm not too worried about that. Going to leave it for another four days, see if we get anything. Um, I know the composition's really quite nice. Got the lighting just how I like it. Um, so I'm going to leave it for a bit longer and see if we can get lucky. Because I know uh, the subject that might come through would be really, really exciting. But now with the sun starting to get a bit high, I'm going to head back, do a little bit of editing uh, before I move off. Probably a little bit deeper into the uh, national park here. Um, for some photography a little bit later today but these trees are shaking and I'm wondering if there is a small troop of squirrel monkeys up ahead of me so I'm gonna go looking for them and see what I can find um, because the jungle you just you just never know what you're gonna come across 